So hi guys, so in today's video, we're basically gonna talk about interview tips um, for iOS uh, jobs. Now, these tips also apply to any sort of job in tech. It could be marketing, front-end development, Android development, software development. These are just general tips in general. So just to give you guys a bit of context about myself, because you probably are wondering like, what does this brother even do? So basically at my current company, I'm a lead app developer. So I basically help uh, manage, uh, align and maintain the processes and the apps for both iOS and Android. So that also comes with the responsibility of hiring people as well. So I've done quite a few interviews where I've had to interview and hire people um, for iOS roles and Android roles as well. And in this video, I basically just want to talk about some tips for you guys if you're currently going um, for a job in software development in general, or these are tips that you can use if you're um, going for an office interview, um, because this, you might be watching this post COVID, um, so you can finally sit on some Tango Wise Blast. I've been missing them so much, man. Or if you're locked down in COVID as well, you can use these tips as well for a remote interview. So I've done interviews in person before COVID and I've also done interviews, uh, you know, during COVID on Google Meets or anything like that, whatever in it. So basically, uh, what we're going to do in the first bit is we're going to talk about prep. So basically when you're prepping for an interview, the best advice I can give you is do your research on the company. So one of the things that I'm looking for when you know we're hiring people is that how interested are you in the company that I work for? So I'm not saying that you need to go down the family tree and find out like where the CEO's granddad was born. Basically what I'm saying is that you just need to basically have a common interest. Also as well, by you reading and researching the company, it also gives you an idea so you can know whether this company is a good fit for you. Because remember, it's a two way street. Next bit of advice I give you is a dress code. Now, me personally, I ain't gonna lie. Anyone who, work, who works with me knows I was a trailblazer because I was the first guy to make wearing joggers at my work acceptable. So basically I used to rock up to work in joggers and you know, uh, tracksuit now in some companies that is not on you have to basically wear a shirt and pants but in my company it's quite relaxed so we can basically wear like what i'm wearing right now i can rock up in a hat even if i want to turn up with a do-rag i could probably do that as well but it's really good to ask hr beforehand to basically know what are the policies and what you should wear for your interview just so you're prepared as well so another tip is if you know any senior developers um, or if you've connected with any of them online as well, ask them for advice and also ask them as well if they possibly could spare some time to maybe do a mock interview with you. So if they do have time, appreciate it because obviously I know people are busy, um, but basically just ask them to just ask you a couple of questions, treat it like it was an actual interview and basically get feedback from them to know which areas you need to improve on. Another thing is to practice your interview questions as well. So practice interview questions. So if you're an iOS developer, look at common iOS interview questions. If you don't know them, if you're an Android developer, do the same, whatever field you're in and just basically practice them. Another thing is, you know that CV that you wrote where you applied for a job, make sure that you study that thing, you know, because when you get into the interview, like you will get asked questions on it. And if you're someone who basically lied on your CV, I would not recommend you do that. Be as honest as you can basically just explain what it is that you've done on your cv also as well study your cv because it'll probably come up in the interview if someone asks you a question about it as well and just to follow on with the cv as well before you go into into the interview just try and think about some of the accomplishments that you've done or challenges that you faced and you might not have ever had a job before in tech um, that's fine. Just think about a challenge that you faced. So let's say, for example, if you're studying, if you're struggling with understanding a concept, it's fine to put that on as a challenge and as an accomplishment as well, because you accomplished something new. So depending on whether you have a couple of months of experience, years of experience, you're a seasoned pro, think about your accomplishments. All right, cool. So now we're going to talk about during the interview. So during the interview, this applies as well, um, post and pre-COVID, you basically wanna basically like prepare yourself. So whatever it is you need to do to relax, if that's eating Doritos, playing FIFA, whatever it is, do something to basically make you sure that you're relaxed and calm because you don't wanna try and basically be nervous in the interview. 
remember when you ever you go into an interview yeah it's a two-way street you're trying to make sure that you find out that this company is right for you go into the interview greet everyone in the interview so make sure that you greet all the people and just basically introduce yourself as well you don't want to be a robot when you go in an interview like we want to see your personality so i'm not saying you should bust up and start saying all these jokes and being rude and being crude and all that but show your personality basically be yourself and be how you would around someone that you've just met be respectful be kind be curious as well and you can also start a conversation as well because it's not really um i mean for me anyway i don't look at an interview as a super super formal thing I look at an interview as I'm looking to get to know you as a person and I want to see if you're the right fit for our company and you should do the same thing. You should talk to the people that are interviewing you and have a chat with them and basically find out, are these people the right fit for me? Would I want to work with this person? So following on from the other one, from the other points that I made before as well, to reiterate it again, make sure that you come prepared with your CV. Now, luckily, if you're working remotely from home, if you have two monitors, you could have your CV um, next to you, so you can always reference it. But obviously, if you're in an office environment, make sure that you, before the interview, just study your CV and just basically study the key parts that they could question you on. Now, these key parts could be your last work experience, and it doesn't have to be work experience where you actually were a developer. You could be someone who worked in like O2, like myself. I remember on my first um, CV, I'm pretty sure that I put down the retail store that I worked in because I used to work as a um, phone salesperson. Um, so you want to study that your achievements as well so anything to do with your education and any sort of accomplishments that you put down on your cv as well and also as well remember that when you're in the interview as well that you basically want to talk about your accomplishments so talk about the accomplishments that you basically have um you know experienced and any other challenges that you have overcome as well just to show that you're someone who's adaptable Okay, cool. So now you've done the interview, you've answered all the questions, you're now towards the end of the interview. You might see me looking over there. The reason why is because my Google is flashing. I don't know why it thinks that I'm, I'm talking to it. But basically, um, towards the end of the interview, yeah, this is now your chance to basically find out, is this company a fit for me? So the first thing you want to do um, now, in my opinion, this applies if you work for a, if you're going for an interview for a big company or an agency or even a small independent company. And this also applies for any kind of job as well. Forget about software development. This is any job in life, in my opinion. You need to find out how the company is going to support you because you've got to remember, yeah, you're going to be spending a lot of your time going to work. If you go to work for a company that you do not enjoy working for, you're going to hate every second of it. So basically find out how this company is going to work and support you. So what does the company do in terms of career progression? How does the company work in terms of stuff like, you know, preparing for a new project? How would they onboard you? How would they help support you to basically get from point A to point B? If you have any questions that you're curious about, now's the time to ask them. And I feel like it's really important to ask these questions because you get to get a feel about how much the company is invested in its employees. Now, the company that I work for, um, we do do a lot of social um, things um, that we try to, especially with COVID. And the people that I work for are all sound people as well. So when we, I have to answer this question, it's quite easy for me to answer because there's loads of different societies and things that you can do in my company. So that's another thing as well. You want to ask about the societies that are available. So if you go for, a, if you're someone who's interested in anime, manga, uh, food, cooking, films, books, whatever, try and find those um, societies as well. So if you do get the job, you have people that you can connect with on the job um, and you don't feel like you're isolated. And I think this is especially important with coronavirus going on at the moment that you basically find people that you connect with because the last thing you want to do is basically go into a job and when you go into a job, um, you're just basically just working from home in your own little corner. You know, it's not the best. So another thing that you want to do as well is if you're going for a more developer job, um, a technical job, um, or even, I guess anything you could say, 
find out what they use and see how that applies to what it is that you're currently using. So an example of this is obviously as an iOS developer, we have different languages you could use, Swift UI, Swift Objective-C, and there's loads of different architectures as well. Find out what that company is using. So does the company use Swift? Do they use IRX Swift? Do they use CocoaPods? Do they use Cartage? All these things, because ultimately you got to understand here yeah, that like if you go for a job, and they use a framework or library that you're not comfortable with and they say that we're using this, we're gonna be setting our ways, maybe that company is not fit for you. And ultimately at the end of the day, that's fine. You can always keep it moving because there will be a company that suits your needs. Now, if you're someone who doesn't care about that stuff and you're excited about it, then maybe it's cool to, to learn new things like Eric Swift and Combine, but at the same time, you wanna find out the stack that they're using so you can basically get an, get an idea as to, as to whether that interests you or if it doesn't. Also, another thing to ask as well is to make sure that you ask the company about the perks as well. So we all like perks and benefits, let's not lie. So you want to know what the perks and benefits are for working for this company. That way as well, it might judge your decision because obviously you might want to work for a company where they offer things such as a pension scheme. I know for Americans, um, they don't have the NHS. So, you know, having medical insurance is important. So these things are really important questions. So if you have things that you feel um, are important to you, such as flexible time for childcare, or, you know, being able to basically support you with travel, all these things, ask as well. It's fine to ask, but it's important to know the perks and benefits that this company is offering and see if they work for you. Okay, cool. So now you've um, finished the interview, the interview's done. So after the interview, uh, what I find is really good to do is to basically email the company and just thank them for their time. And um, it just basically leaves a good impression as well and a lasting impression as well, because it's just you going that extra mile as well. Now, there's two scenarios that you could go down here after the interview. Now, the first one, uh, we'll start with a bad one, is you don't get a job. And all I'm gonna say is it's fine. The main thing you need to do if you do not get the job of the interview is just into just basically email HR or email the company or call them up, whatever it is you prefer to do, and just basically try and get feedback as to why you didn't get the job. Now, the reason why I say that is because that information is so critical and so key that it could be the, the missing piece for you to get your next role. So don't take it personal. The company might have felt that you're not ready, you're not the right fit, or you just don't suit what it is that they're looking for in a specific project at this moment in time. It's fine. Get the feedback, read the feedback, basically reapply it to yourself and go again. And it's fine if you don't get a job, honestly, there's loads of opportunities out there in it. Just use the time to work on self-development. If you're old enough as well, pour yourself a glass of Bailey's, clink, clink, and treat yourself. Now, the second scenario is that you might actually get the job. Now, if you get the job, great, congratulations, you smashed it, yeah? What I would do, and I know what I did for my, when I got my first job as an iOS developer, I basically emailed um, the company and the, per the person, I luckily had the person's email who actually gave, offered me the job, who interviewed me as well. And I basically asked them, is there anything that I need to do to prepare for this role? Now, I don't think you understand how powerful that is because you're basically showing the person who has basically offered you this job, yeah, that you're willing to start, you're willing to go and you're ready to basically get yourself in the right mindset and get a head start. Now, I'm not saying that you have to bust up and learn an entire book of whatever it is that they basically told you, but what you can do whilst you're preparing for the job is just basically get some insight into the technologies that they're using and some of the processes as well. So when you start the job, you already have a bit of information to help yourself get started. And again, if you've got a job, congratulations. Again, if you're old enough, get yourself that Bailey's here. Clink, clink, drink it. So... That's the end of today's video. Hopefully you found all these tips useful. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And the one bit of advice that I will give you, just that overrides all the tips I gave you in this video here, is to remember that the company that you're applying for is a two-way street. Not only are you trying to apply for the job because you want to work for them, but you got to remember as well that you need to see that their values and principles match mine as well. Would I like do they work for me because you gotta remember ultimately at the end of the day yeah you're the one who's working for this company and you do not want to go and get a job for a company where you don't enjoy going to work you know you hate it every single day you know da -da -da -da. so 
make sure that you think about that. If you need to, re-watch this video to get all the tips again. And as usual, like I said before, like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell video and I'll catch you guys in a bit. Deuces.